Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday morning to you. Welcome back to Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. We are looking at the resurrection of 1 Corinthians 15 through the prism of the new creation. Everyone agrees, everyone that I know of, agrees that the new heaven and new earth is a direct result of the resurrection. So, if we can determine some facts about the new creation, we will have determined the facts about the resurrection. To put that another way, if it can be demonstrated that the resurrection is not a resurrection of biological bodies at some so-called end of time, we have demonstrated that the new creation is not a literal physical new creation materially. Likewise, if we prove that the new heaven and new earth is not a new material physical creation, we have thereby demonstrated that the resurrection is not a resurrection of biological bodies. So, with that in mind, we've been focusing on Isaiah chapter 65. Let's keep in mind that the New Testament writers tell us that their expectation of the new heaven and new earth is found in the Old Testament. God's promises to old covenant Israel. Now, I, I've got to tell you, it's absolutely remarkable to me when I read the commentaries and they acknowledge that Isaiah chapter 65 is the ground, the basis, and the fountain from which the New Testament doctrine of the new heaven and new earth flows. Okay. And then they turn around and they virtually ignore, they virtually ignore everything that Isaiah 65 actually says. Now, what I'm going to do starting this morning is to take a look at the new creation through the prism of the new Jerusalem. After all, you have what? The new heaven, new earth. And Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem. Where is the new Jerusalem? In the new heaven and new earth. Notice what the Lord said. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered or come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem as a rejoicing. There you have it. New heaven, new earth, new Jerusalem. <laughs> i got to tell you, the arguments that some people offer, and I, I mean no disrespect, uh, but the, the, uh, the, the utter desperation of some people to, to escape the force of what the Bible says based upon their own preconceived ideas, based upon their denominational traditions, based upon the, the patristics, that desperation, you know, it just kind of grows and grows and grows and grows. Now, just recently, in, in a continuing tirade against me, one individual said, oh, Preston believes that the new heaven and new earth is a metaphoric thing. Now, mind you, this individual claims to be a preterist, claims to be a full preterist, but he is condemning me for claiming that the new heaven and new earth is a metaphoric and spiritual reality, not a literal, physical new heaven and new earth. Well, um, okay, if you're a preterist and you claim all things have been fulfilled, and if you deny that the new heaven and new earth is metaphoric, spiritual, then when was the literal heaven and the literal earth destroyed, and a literal new heaven and new earth created. Do you see the problem here? But notice the new Jerusalem. You know, early writers, to refer to those that a lot of people love to, love to cite, realized that if there was not a doctrine of two Jerusalems in Scripture, 
then basically the church would cease to exist. But what we find throughout the Old Testament, sometimes explicitly, sometimes implicitly, is a doctrine of two Jerusalems. There was the earthly Jerusalem that was to ultimately be destroyed, like in Isaiah 65. The Lord God will slay you. Well, that means Jerusalem is going to be destroyed. So you have the earthly physical Jerusalem, and then you have the new Jerusalem. And some commentators really struggled with this down through the years. How could some passages, on the one hand, talk, talk about the total annihilation of Jerusalem and, the, and yet talk about, in the same text, the glorification of Jerusalem? What? Total destruction? Glorification? What? What's going on here? And thus, there is the concept of two Jerusalems. Once again, one is the earthly, the old covenant Jerusalem, the literal, the material, the physical. The other is the heavenly Jerusalem. It's right here in Isaiah 65. God would create a new Jerusalem when he destroyed the old. Now, our choices here are very simple. If he is talking about literal, physical heavens and earth, if he is talking about literal, physical Jerusalem, then old covenant heaven and earth, old covenant Jerusalem would be destroyed, and guess what? <coughs> God would create a new, literal, physical heaven and earth. That's what we're told by some. But he would also create a literal, physical Jerusalem. Now, seriously, folks, while my dispensational friends readily agree that there's supposed to be a new physical Jerusalem in the millennium, all millennialists and post-millennialists, as a rule, reject that. Joel McDermott argued in articles leading up to my our debate in, in 2012 that Zion, i.e. Jerusalem, has been spiritualized and fulfilled in Christ. Okay? If Zion has been spiritualized and is fulfilled in Christ, guess what that means? That means Isaiah 65 is fulfilled. We're in the new heaven and new earth. Do you see where all this machinations, may I use the term, leads when we try to literalize things or when we admit to the spiritual reality of some and yet argue for physical, we wind up contradicting ourselves. May I use the term 12 ways to Sunday? All right? The new heaven and the new earth demanded a new Jerusalem. So let me ask you, as a lead-in to our next video, what is your view of the New Jerusalem? Don't forget, the New Jerusalem would be in the new heaven and the new earth. Is the New Jerusalem a current reality? Yes or no? If the New Jerusalem is a current reality, then the new heaven and the new earth of Isaiah 65 is fulfilled. And if the New Jerusalem is a reality today, and if we as believers dwell in the New Jerusalem, there is no other New Jerusalem coming. And there is no other New Heaven and New Earth that is coming. Unless you want to destroy this New Jerusalem. Jerusalem. I discuss all of this in my book, The Elements Shall Melt with Fervent Heat. Go to my website, donkpreston.com, bibleprophecy.com, and order the book, 
Be sure to let me know that you saw the offer on YouTube or Facebook, and I'll pay your shipping. All right? Thanks so much for joining me for this morning's Morning Musings. We will see you on the flip side as we look at the new Jerusalem.